In this video, we are going to discuss modulus decoding, and the example that we will be using is a that of a decade counter. The modulus of a counter is the number of unique states through which the counter will sequence, and the maximum possible number of states of a counter is 2 to the power n, where n is equal to the number of flip-flops in that counter. In this example, you will see that there's four flip-flops, flip-flop 0, flip-flop 1, flip-flop 2, flip-flop 3. So that gives us 2 to the power 4, which is then a total of 16 different states that this counter can be in. Since we want to create a decade counter, we need to truncate the 16 states to a total of only 10 states. Counters with 10 states are also commonly known as BCD counters. To obtain a truncated sequence, it is necessary to force the counter to recycle before going through all of its possible states. In the example that we have here, the total number of states is 16. We want to, however, reduce that number to 10 states only. We decode the outputs using a simple AND gate. And we decide which outputs need to be connected to the AND gate using the following simple method. We take the number of states that we want this counter to reset at. We convert that decimal number into binary, which is 1010. And we then you just need to associate the bits in the binary number with the flip-flops. You remember that each one of the flip-flops represents one of the bits. This is the least significant bit. But this is also flip-flop zero. So that bit there is flip-flop one. That there is flip-flop two. And that bit there is represented by flip-flop three. It's easy for us to see that in order to reset this counter, a specific sequence, we just now need to go and find out which flip-flops are represented by the ones and connect those outputs to our AND gate. In this example here, one of the outputs that needs to be connected to our um, AND gate is flip-flop 3, and the other one is flip-flop 1. When both of these outputs are high, we will have a high pulse on the output of the AND gate. This pulse now need to be connected to all the clear inputs. There's one additional thing that needs to be added. If you look at the clear inputs, you'll see that they will only work when there's a low pulse on them. In order to for this AND gate to be able to supply a low pulse when these two inputs are high, we also need to ensure that there's a bubble on the output of the AND gate, which then obviously changes that AND gate into a NAND gate. Having done all of that, we will now have a counter that resets itself the moment that Q1 is high and Q3 is high. We can now go and develop the timing diagram for this specific truncated sequence. First of all, notice that all of the flip-flops have a bubble on the clock inputs, and this means that they will only trigger whenever there is a falling edge on the input clock pulses. It is an asynchronous counter since the external clock is only connected to flip-flop zero, and all the other counters essentially have their clocks connected to the output of the previous counter. So let's see what the output of flip-flop zero will look like. It will only toggle on the falling edge. So on each falling edge, we now have a change of the logic level. What about flip-flop one? Well, flip-flop one will only change on the falling edge of Q0. So let's have a look. So the falling edge of Q0 is over there, there, over there, over there, and over there. Q2 or flip-flop 2 will only change on the falling edge of Q1. Q2 
two changes only on the falling edge of Q1. And Q3 changes only on the falling edge of Q2. Q3 will only have one change right there at the end. How does the AND gate reset the counter? Well, we are looking for one specific situation where Q3 and Q1 are both ones. When they are both ones, we will have a zero presented on the clear inputs of each one of the flip flops. And that specific situation only occurs in one specific place in the timing diagram. If you look over here, you will see that right at this point, Q1 goes from a low to a high, while Q3 is already a high. And this is the specific condition that will trigger the NAND gate and therefore reset the counter. Right at this point where Q0 goes from a high to a low and Q1 changes from a low to a high, we actually get the condition that we are testing for. When this occurs, the clear output goes low. Remember that the clear output is high all the way until this specific sequence is decoded. At that specific spot, clear goes low and resets the counter to its initial state. Right at this spot, all of this gets deleted. After the reset condition occurred, all of these pulses will reset to zero. And the sequence will then start from scratch.